Ms. Smith, and of course, Ms. Smith, uh, we promised the last time uh, that we would give you an opportunity to sort of elaborate upon the community activities in reference to uh, some of the things that you were involved in before the movement. And uh, then uh, uh, Ms. Henry will also give us some information and following that. And you should also say something. I understand that you were involved with the uh, so-called Freedom Rides. And, and so we, we certainly want you to speak to that. Let's start okay. with you. Um, I was a student at Tennessee State University. I had started school in 59. And um, just like Ms. Henry, I had not thought about uh, segregation. I was just wrapped on becoming educated, mm -hmm, you say. Mm -hmm. And um, I, when I started with the movement, I started realizing that things were not the same as they were in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I didn't, when I went downtown as a little girl, we would see white people, but you didn't think mm -hmm. much about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, your parents protected you. And when you went back in your neighborhood, you went to the same schools, same churches. Everybody knew everybody, and they were protective of us. And uh, we didn't have any reason to even think about things that were wrong. Uh, but once I did, I said, well, if I can help do something, I will. And when I went on the Freedom Ride, that's when I really became totally involved. Mm -hmm. I was arrested on, April, on May 28th in Jackson, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and uh, I spent 39 days in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, part of that was in Parchman Penitentiary. Mm -hmm. And in jail, it was kind of, they tried to intimidate us and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but we, we made it okay without being, I personally was not attacked mm -hmm. or anything like mm -hmm. that but they tried to work on your mind, mostly. Mm -hmm. And um, when we came back from jail, we did the stand-ins the the stand mm -hmm. or the picketing at H.G. Hills. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was just about my extent with the movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did go back to school because, of course, we were put out of school. Mm -hmm. We were expelled mm -hmm. from Tennessee State mm -hmm. for going on the Freedom Ride. And I eventually went back to school after we were exonerated. Mm -hmm. And I did not complete my education, but I did get in two and a half years. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that was my experience. But it's, it's, it's so much courage that has to be involved with the two of you. Now, you sort of stumbled into the movement in a real yes, sense. Yes, I did. Even after getting there, uh, there, there was so much terror that, that was associated with, with, with this movement that uh, somehow it, it, it seems that it, it would have been difficult for me to have maintained any kind of anything. I, I think I would have been too fearful in a real sense to have been I involved in the movement because, see, I'm from Arkansas. Okay. And, 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 and we understood. I was at A.M. <coughs> College in time of Arkansas, mm -hmm. and we had 2,000 students there. And out of those 2,000 students, only eight went down to uh, protest, you know, the city, and when y'all started it in Nashville, you see, only eight went down, you see. And most of us, because we were embarrassed, didn't want to admit that we were fearful and et cetera, we stood around and we pointed at them, you see, that saying that uh, they didn't understand the terror of uh, the white man, the Ku Klux Klan, and et cetera, et cetera. And so it took a lot of courage, you see, uh, to uh, become involved in it the way that the two of you were, especially uh, knowing what I know about the Freedom Rides, uh, Ms. Smith, that uh, that had to be a very, very terrifying experience because uh, were you on the bus that was burned? No, I was not. Mm -hmm. And I did not go when the students from Tennessee State took up the Freedom Ride after the Aniston uh, burning. Um, I stayed here and went to school and I sympathized with them. But one thing, my family asked me not to. And so I thought about it and I knew they were leaving the next day before I actually left. But after an incident on a, Jefferson, on a West End bus, hearing something that someone said, that's when it hit me that I was supposed to be going on the Freedom Ride. Mm -hmm. And so I went home, I went, got off the Jefferson Street bus, went to the office, asked could I still go. I was told I could. I went home and I called my mother. I said, I'm going. Mm -hmm. And this time she did not say, please don't. She said, okay, if you have to. 
So that's what I did, and I was gone. That was just a, a development of growing consciousness among a lot of folks, among the students and among the parents, and mm -hmm. the people of understanding finally exactly what the whole thing was all about, and that somebody had to go. Yeah, it was like somebody, I had to complete what I started. Somebody had to go. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and, 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 and I know we've got about uh, five minutes here, uh, uh, Frankie. Let's, let's uh, give you an opportunity to talk about your uh, stint in jail. Oh, yes. After about five minutes, after the white lady put the cigarette out on my arm, we were arrested. We were taken to jail, fingerprinted, taken mug shots. And my parents at that time saw me on 6 o'clock news. <laughs> now, I'm very afraid because my father probably thought I was in the library. And... Uh, I didn't have any way of knowing that he had seen me until we were arrested and they said, your parents are downtown to, downstairs to uh, get you out. But I was caught up in the singing and in, in all of, I mean, it ran from heart to heart, the, the uh, impact a lot of that this movement, in yes, uh -huh. yes. So I sent a message back to my parents that I'm not leaving until the rest of them leave. Mm -hmm. um, so we stayed in jail uh, over two weeks. Mm -hmm. and they tried us one by one, and they didn't let the first person leave until they had tried everyone. Mm -hmm. But uh, the lockup was very traumatic to me because at that time, it was in February, about 20, 22 degrees, and we had to sleep on the cold steel beds with the air holes in it, but no mattresses, mm -hmm. covers, um, pillows or anything. And uh, we had to do this every night, but we kept each other um, spirits up by singing Negro spirituals, our freedom songs, and Diane and Angela, Angeline Butler, they kind of really cling to me because they knew that this was new to me. A very important impact is when we got out, Diane Nash and Marion Berry took me home because the rest of the students went to the campus, mm -hmm. either Fisk, uh, Tennessee a and I, American Baptist, mm -hmm. but I was a local girl, mm -hmm. so I had to go cross town. Mm -hmm. And they had put my name in the paper mm -hmm. with the address, and I was very upset because mm -hmm. uh, the white hecklers had uh, come by and thrown rotten eggs mm -hmm. and bricks and rocks mm -hmm. through the home of my parents, mm -hmm. and that upset me. Mm -hmm. But my father was so proud of me, mm -hmm. he said, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Now, I had 18 hours, I was a sophomore, mm -hmm. and we had the quarter system at that mm -hmm. time, and they gave me 18 hours of Fs, mm -hmm. and contacted my parents and told them that I couldn't attend Tennessee State anymore. Mm -hmm. But I did go back in 66, mm -hmm. and I graduated, got my BA, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, in 70 and my master's in 73. Very good. Now, Ms. Smith, uh, we've got about a minute and a half. What would you say to young people today in terms of uh, trying to uh, understand the legacy and, and to do better than they are doing? I think if, every, if all the young people would try to learn more about the things that happened in the past and not try to sweep it under the rug, that they would understand more about what's happening today. Uh, we didn't just start out being able to do everything you wanted to do, being treated the way you wanted to be treated. And that way you would understand where people are coming from when they treat you the, uh, the wrong way. They need to know also, uh, yesterday I was at a school where uh, the, the professor said, the faculty needs to be here. The students enjoyed it and they are learning more, but the faculty also needs to, to be here because how can you teach people not to hate if you don't know what it means to be hated? Thank you.
Very good. And, and, and of course, uh, Ms. Henry, uh, uh, we've got about uh, half a minute. Uh, uh, That's my minutes. same sentiment, uh, my uh, same, sentiment. same sentiment. Yes, with a, a young children mm -hmm. I taught for 35 years at one school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try to educate the children mm -hmm. that uh, you need to know your past. Mm -hmm in order to go forward. Very good, and I think that, that, that that's a sentiment that uh, both of us, all three of us agree with, and I'm certain that uh, Ms. McLean also agrees with that. And let me thank the uh, two of you for giving us that excellent information, and uh, let me encourage our audience uh, to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you, and good morning.